All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our part C. Actually, we had two part two two parts of part A, and then we had part B, and now we're part C. This is the final um, section or the final part for this uh, animate tutorial. And so we're going to go ahead and start right away, and we're going to finish this project today. So let's go ahead and work. Go open up our working file copy. I have multiple because I was working on it earlier, but this is where we left off with the nation, Nathan's hot dog area. All right. So <clears throat> let's go ahead today. We're going to start working. We're going to talk about working with layers, undo, um, adding some effects and kind of just overall generally, uh, working with, with the main things, which are keyframes and frames. There's two different types. Make sure you know the two different kinds and we're going to go over them in a second. But just keep that in mind as we start learning that today, because that's how you move things around. Okay, and I have my trusty, uh, the rocket, um, the book to help us out. So let's go ahead and let's let's get underway here. Okay, so we have uh, we're gonna start in inserting frames. Right now we have a background photo, and another um, overlapping photo, and then we also have the Nathan's famous hot dogs here, um, in the same place. But what I'm gonna want you to do is I want you to grab the Nathan's um, hot dog in place, and I want you to go ahead and delete that. Okay, just hit the delete key or the backspace key once you highlighted it. And that's what I just did right now. So um, there's a reason why we're going to take that out for a second. We'll, and, and bear with me, we, we, are, we will uh, be adding things back in. But we're going to be working with um, the, the, the timeline today specifically, right? We're, uh, the past few days, we've focused on the stage. Everything's on, on top of the stage right over here. And I'll zoom in my cool uh, pointer. And we've been working with the stage primarily and kind of working with panels and stuff. But this time we're going to work down here, down in the timeline. That's where we insert our our, our, our frames. So I want you to go over here to the uh, right-hand side. Uh, and I have to may, may have to move my head a little bit because here is where we're going to see, uh, we're going to resize the, uh, the timeline view, right? And what this does is it allows us to um, shrink and grow the timeline. So right now I'm going to actually get it really big so we can actually see all the individual frame numbers. Okay. Because the way, way we had it before, we it kind of got you in between. So we have five all the way to 10 and then 15, but it just gives us more detail. So again, if you want to see all of the frames, you need to, to open it up a little bit more. Okay. And the reason why we need that is because in a moment we're going to be adding frames. Now, one of the things that I will tell you, you may be going back and forth. You may be because of the, of what you're working with. You may shrink it, you may grow it. It just depends on what you're doing. So right now let's 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 do it to where at least you can see every single frame individually. Okay? That's how we re re resize that. So what what I'm going to do is we're going to actually we're going to insert a frame. Right? We're going to insert a frame uh, because again, if we hit play, nothing happens, right? Because there isn't any information out here. But we're going to select, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select uh, frame 48 on the background layer, right? So I have up to 20, so I may have to go over a little more. So I'm going to screw over. Go ahead and let's all do this right now. Go all the way to 48, right? And make sure you select background, and so so background is blue, and you go to you go all the way down to the little square forty eight, and you're going to click it to it so it's highlighted, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to choose insert right up at the top, timeline, and you're going to insert a frame, okay? So then all of a sudden it gets filled up, pretty cool, right? So. Let's go ahead and hit uh, Command Z or Control Z if you're on another device. And what that does is, is we're able to play the whole time now. So let's go back to uh, 48. Uh, mine is still highlighted, 48. But we can also push F5, boom, and it automatically inserts it as well, right? Conversely, we could also, or and additionally, we could actually right click it and put an insert frame if you wanted to, right? So there's three ways to actually insert a frame. Right. I like to use F5 because I, when you practice it and you get really used to it, you don't want to keep going to menus. You want to use your keyboard for all the shortcuts. Right. Um, and so we've already inserted that frame. So now we have our little blue line. Now we can kind of shrink it. I'm going to shrink a little bit, the, uh, the timeline a bit. And now I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning 
and I hit play, and now the playhead moves all the way across, right? Because now we have content. Now I have all of those little frames, every single one of those cards filled up, right? But that's the cool thing about Animate. I didn't have to draw, or I didn't have to keep bringing in uh, this background, right? For every, like when we did our flip books, we had to, if we wanted a background, we have to copy the background to every single card. In Animate, all of the cards are filled up when you add that fr that key, that frame, right? So now, this is this this is when you're playing the playhead, right? When you're playing the playhead, it's like me going through or you going through our flip book. That's what that just did. Except that right now, all we have is just the background, right? And we only have this little carousel on the very first um, on the very first frame. So if we play it, we're able to go all the way to the end, right? So uh, again, let's go ahead. That's what that's what happened. We, we created, um, and now we've created a different layer. Now let's go to, um, we're going to go to the um, next frame, which is we're going to select 48, right? in photo layer one right here we're going to choose that one right and what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually add another layer i'm just going to hit press f5 on my keyboard boom because i want to just completely do that now that little carousel carries all the way through right and i'm going to click do it one more time and i'm going to click F5 again. No, no, I won't do F5. I'm going to Command Z. And that way I take that out. I'm going to right click and insert frame. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just a different way of doing it. If you forget one way, um, and what's cool about it is if you if you forget one way, you right click it, it actually tells you up on the left hand side over here, right here, it's an F5, dude. If you if you want to insert frame, you just F5, right? It gives you like kind of the, uh, the little shortcut there. So now we have all three layers with 48 frames. So now photo two, photo one, but we don't really have actually have anything in photo um, two because we just erased it, remember? That Nathan saw dog. All right, now though that's frames. That's basically um, just different, um, everything filled in, right? Every, every, like all of the, your, your cards filled in all the way across for 48 um, frames. We have that all across, but we're going to do something different now that those are called frames. Now we're switching over to keyframes, right? And a keyframe is a change. All right. Let me say that again. A keyframe is a change in the content, right? Wherever you want something to move automatically, or you want something to appear or disappear, all of that is, you need to have a keyframe there. In other words, that's an action point. Okay. And I want you to understand that they're indicated and I'm going to see if we can get, get here real quick. These, the first three are the big change. The background appears, the carousel appears, and whatever we put in photo two is going to appear. But I want you to take a look. And I'm going to try to zoom this in or magnify it really big, right? Hopefully I can do that in post-production. But right here, you can see that there are two black dots. That means there's something there. There's a change there. But if you look up here, there's a dot with a, that's an empty circle. And what that means is that there's there's that you've created all of the, the the cards, you got all the cards ready, but you haven't really put anything. So they're kind of like they're blank cards, right? In the area. So you've created all the cards, all the frames, but you haven't really created or put anything in there. There's no action. So that just tells you that it's empty, right? So if you ever see something like with a circle, you understand that's that's an empty area. All right. So we got that. So what we're going to do is we're actually gonna pull our Nathan's hot dogs back in. And we're actually going to insert the keyframe, uh, but we're going to do it in a different part. We don't want everything to just land in one area. So we're actually going to do, um, we're going to look at, um, let's, let's look, look for um, keyframe 24, right? And again, if I know where it's at because it's uh, it should be right here, right? And, I, if I, and if I don't, if I want to double check my work, I can go, oh, I was off. Mr. Juarez was off. Oh, I thought I was there. Boom. I was off one. So I'll just fix it. You see? So now that I've 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 kit um, keyframe twenty four, all right. I want to add one of those keyframes, right? And 
what I, you can always go to the same three ways. You can go to insert timeline keyframe, or you can right click insert keyframe, right? Or you can actually just do hit F6. I'm actually going to do it off the menu right now. So I'm going to say insert keyframe, boom, right? And again, I'm going to move. It has a little, it's hollow. It has a the, the little circle with it's empty. And now that with that selected, and photo two selected, it's blue. Now I'm gonna go back to my library and I'm gonna drag in photo number two. Boom, there it is, right? So now that's the keyframe. Remember I said it's change. So if you look at this keyframe at the very beginning of our timeline, it's empty because that, that photo two didn't come in yet, but over here, it's darkened, but you also see the two different levels of gray as well, right? You have these lighter gray and you have the dark gray, which basically will give you a clue that there's nothing there. But now watch what happens when we hit the play button, right? Boom, bam, sweet, right? So we're already, we're starting with our animation. So somewhere in the cards or in the middle of the cards, right? In, uh, in frame um, 24, right? We inserted that Nathan's hot dogs, famous hot dogs picture, boom right in, in frame 24. I was gonna count it, 24, boom, put it in there. So that's how we start adding things and putting things into our animation. So we're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep going, right? So we have photo number two there. Um, so let's continue this. All right. Let me move on. And now let so we have the photos number uh, we have photo number uh, what, uh, one and photo number two ready to go on the and so we're going to basically uh, continue with this and we're going to be moving the keyframes now right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the keyframe in um, a photo two which is at, at uh, I guess frame twenty four right here we're going to collect that right. And we're going to drag the keyframe to, let's move it around. I'll, you know what? I wanted Nathan's hot dog to be earlier. So what I'll do is I'll grab that and I'll bring it in to 12, right? So now I want you to see this. Now we can go ahead and play it again. And now it appears earlier. And, and so you can actually move the keyframes around and, and so you can get them in the right spot, okay? And that's just re repositioning your keyframes. It's not a huge, huge deal, right? So it appears earlier. Again, you can use backspace, you can delete. If I wanted to delete this, I can go ahead and hit backspace, but I'm gonna keep us moving because we have a, kind of a lot to cover today. All right, so we've got two photos here, all right? Um, we're gonna go, go to, we've got some, a couple of photos, but I, you know, we have a third photo I wanna put in there. So as I highlighted photo two, I'm gonna, there's a little button over here on the left-hand side, and we've already added layers before, but I'm gonna add a new layer. Okay, I'm gonna click that. That's layer one. I'm gonna double click that. I'm gonna call this photo three. And we're getting pretty stacked with photos, right? We're, we've got another we've got another layer, and we're and we're getting pretty stacked. In other words, we're having a lot of photos, right? I should be naming them like Nathan's hot dogs, or I should be naming them like like a carousel, you know, um, ride. And then I should name this other one whatever it is. But just for right now, for this tutorial, we're just doing photo one, two, and three. All right. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe here at. Uh, keyframe 24 and that's where I think it's at. Let me double check my work, right? Boom. Yep. I opened it up and there it is 24 pretty much, right? So now what I'm going to do now that it's at 24, I'm going to um, kick the new uh, and then I'm going to layer 24 and guess what I'm going to do here, right? And I'm going to Hold on. Add a keyframe, right? So we go to F5, boom, right? Make sure that it's selected, photo three, and then F5. Whoa, something's not happening. It's not letting me to put a keyframe there. Now it did. 
All right, so insert a keyframe, and then I'm gonna drag in photo number three, boom. Which this is a Ferris wheel. I not kind of layer them so I can see them. All right, so now we have three layers. So now if I move this back, all right, there it is, there's some animation. Let me bring this part back. So it may have added a little extra. And there you go. We can we can actually see how it's all playing out. And I'm hitting this little play button here. So there you go. We've added the three. We have some layers in here. So but we're gonna actually gonna we have four layers now. The background, the photo, photo one, photo two, and photo three. Make sure your background is locked. I went ahead and locked it because we don't want to have the background moving around as we start playing with these different layers right so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to want to organize things so what i'm going to do is we're going to add a we're going to add a folder right and there's a little folder icon here right next to the add layer folder new layer and i'm going to click that folder and it's going to create a folder i'm going to call this folder photos right because we want to put all our photos in there and we want to put them at the same there you go I'm sorry and this kind of sometimes it always gets me when I'm trying to figure out how to put these in here. There you go. You have to come from the top to the bottom, but then it works after that. All right, you have to drag them in. It can, can be a little tricky, but now I have the photos into this, this folder so I can actually hide them. So again, right now it's not a big deal. We're only working with four or five files, but once we start getting into a lot of files, as, as you start building these projects up and you may be having maybe 40 or so layers, obviously that's the way down the road, but you're going to want to organize them, right? You're going to want to have them in folders so that you don't have such a big mess or a monster timeline. Cause look, watch what happens when I close these, this folder it becomes only two tracks. So it's a lot more manageable. So even if I have 50 photos, once I click that, I'm only gonna see two timelines, all right? So again, that's really, that's that's important to keep in mind. This, this can get complicated, as complicated as you want, but it also can be a lot of fun. So just keep in mind, staying organized will allow you to become less frustrated, or actually be less frustrated and not become frustrated, however that works out. You know what I mean. So, all right, so let's continue. Um, the next thing we need to do, because we've made that, is I want to go ahead and show you how to highlight a layer. And that is just basically just clicking right next to the color. And it underlines it. See how it underlined it in white? I'm going to take it that off. And then just like locking a layer. It's not a, a, a big issue, but that's what we do to highlight layers, right? And it comes out at the same color. And it highlights the same color as a track, right? See, so that's green and... And again, I'm gonna click, we can click different colors for that particular area. So it'll actually highlight it and you can play that that way. And again, that's if there's a special layer you're working on constantly over and over again, you wanna come back to it, highlight it. That's what we use it for. But right now we're gonna move on. And I just want you to understand that all of these layers, right? Everything works. Remember I told you copy and paste works. So if I hit copy layer, and then I go down here and I hit paste, that works. So you can actually duplicate it so you don't have to keep doing things over and over again. I'm gonna delete that right now. Or I can hit con um, Command Z, right? Go up here, I can go to edit and undo, so, okay? Undo, select layers. Then undo, paste layers, boom, see? I'm already back. So you have multiple layers of undo. You can always hit always Command Z on the Mac or Control Z on a on a Windows or um, or a Chromebook device, so you can always erase, go back in time. All right, if you make a mistake, you can always go back in time. All right, so let's move on. Hopefully, you've got that again. You can pause this at any time, so we can so we can kind of get that over with. So now, uh, or you can come back and get get to where we're at. So now we're going to use the Properties panel, right? And this Properties panel over here, I'm going to click back over here. This changes, it morphs depending on what you're working with, right? Whatever you have selected. So if I have the, this picture selected, see how it changed, right? The position and the size of that picture. If I select this, it changes the position and size of that picture, 
right? So this pa properties panel, it's active. It doesn't stay just the same. Again, if I if I highlight this photo over here, this this layer, boom, all the properties changes over here. So whatever you select, this this properties reacts to it. So it's very reactive. So if if, if you're not seeing something in the properties it's because you haven't selected the proper thing. So you may have to go select it again. Even tools, go watch, watch I go to the left-hand side and I'll click um, the brush tool, boom. It automatically will start um, changing over to the object so you can trace or you can do different things with it, right? Text, I hit the text tool and look, there's your fonts, your points to see how big it is, your, your, your kerning, your, your, I don't think it has a, a letting, but uh, superscript, subscript, all that cool stuff, right? That you guys worked on. But remember, we have to go back to this selection tool. That's our. That's what we've been using right now. That's what moves things around. So if you ever get lost and things aren't working, moving, just make sure you're in the selection tool. There's a shortcut for that, and that's just the letter V. But we don't go there right now. I mean, that's just for your information. All right. So I want you to understand that it always has these X and Y coordinates. Well, depending on what we do with this coordinates right now, if we're in the document size, that's the whole thing. We can change it around and we'll do that in a bit. So again, this, uh, this whole thing works off X and Y coordinates. And I want to start talking about that right now. I particularly, I always like to turn on or view and I'm everybody to do this right now, hit view and go ahead and hit rulers. Boom. Right. Because I want you to notice the rulers, this top ruler. All right. And the top ruler starts at zero, which is at the very end here. And if you go over here to the left-hand side, when we're looking at vertically, it starts at zero here. So zero, zero is this upper left-hand corner. That's gonna help you become super accurate when it comes to positioning things and getting things where you want specifically, right? I know a lot of perfectionists are in my animation class and they want certain things exactly lined up correctly. Well, Animate will allow you to do that, right? Always turn on the rulers. I'm gonna leave this on for right now right? Permanently um, when we're doing our, our tutorials. So you, you can actually see where we're at, right? And, and, and this coordinates can actually make sense because if you don't, you don't see the numbers of where you're actually going to land it, you don't see the, how it's lining up or you don't see what you're typing in and where it's landing and what, what the process is. So let's go ahead and continue. We're going to, we're going to move some things around. Um, and so we're going to go to the, um, to the objects, right? And again, when we go to the properties, uh, we can always differently see, uh, if you don't see the properties panel, you can always go to the window and then check and see if the properties is checked on because here are all our panels right here in the windows, all right? So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna move the, the playhead to, to frame one and we're gonna select photo one, okay? Now we're actually gonna move this using the coordinates, right? So we're gonna click on the little um, picture here, which is this, I wanna say large carousel, I've been calling it a carousel, right? And we're gonna click on that and I wanna move this. And for the X value over here, I wanna move that to, I'm gonna type in 50, let's do it all right now, five zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click the Y and I'm gonna see how it moved it over to the left. I'm gonna click five zero again, boom. And it moved it a little down. So if you look at your ruler, guess what? it's lined up with 50. And you look at your horizontal ruler, I'm sorry, that was the horizontal ruler, this is a vertical ruler, you'll see that it's lined up to 50. So you've lined up the, the, the upper left, upper right hand corner, upper right hand, I'm sorry, sorry, my bad. Upper left hand corner with the upper left hand corner. So everything works off, that's our, that's our point of reference. So everything is off the upper left hand corner. All right, so we've moved that and we're successful now, right? And again, everything is, is is focused on that area. So now we're going to transform this a little bit, right? Because I actually want to do something with it. I just, this doesn't look, I guess, uh, aesthetically pleasing for me. So I'm going to go up to the window and I'm going to go get one called transform. And it's it's down here. It's all the way down here where it's oh, transform. You can hit command T as well. But it just brings up this panel over here. And it's a floating panel because it just popped up, right? If I want to keep this um, panel active, I can I can add it to this panel here. See how it turns blue? That means I'm adding it. I'm sticking it to it. Now it's up here. I can pull it off just by clicking and pulling it off. And you may pull things off. I might want to put it on my little quick bar over here. Boom. And now I can just click it and a transform will come out. 
But for right now, I'm gonna keep it floating. Oh, what happened? That's part of things it, it, when you drag it out, it will kind of resize and you have to hit these little two tiny little arrows to expand. So let's go ahead and rotate this, right? Let's go ahead and rotate this. And by rotating, we're gonna hit negative 12 here, minus 12 on right next to the rotating thing. And then I'll just hit enter, boom. Now it just shifted it over. What we could do also is we can just click that number and it has these, these two arrows left and right. And you can just click and drag and you can actually just manually click it and, and kind of move them over. But for the tutorial, I think I'm just gonna leave it at minus 12 because it stays on the stage, right? It doesn't go off stage, so to speak, like in theater. So again, we're, we, we rotated at 12 degrees uh, clock, clockwise. But let's go to the next one, right? Layer 12, and let's click on that um, layer, and that's Nathan's hot dog. So now we're still in that, we still have transform, but transform is at zero, zero, because again, these panels will change depending on what you're highlighting. So if I go back to the photo, there is our, our minus 12, right? If I click on this other keyframe, it's at zero because we haven't done anything to it, but I am gonna do something to it, right? And so what we wanna do is we wanna use, uh, we wanna move the location first of all. Uh, so let's go back to our properties up here and I'm gonna select this photo and I'm gonna go, so make sure you're selecting the photo and we're back in properties. And the X, I wanna change it to 200. And the Y, I wanna to go to 40, right? So now we moved it over. And now I wanna rotate this a little bit. So we've already done this. I'll go to rotate in the transform. If you don't see transform, go to window, transform, and it'll bring up this panel. So then we'll go ahead and click that. And now I'll give that, rotate that six. Boom, give it a little contrast, just skew it over a little bit, right? So we've done that, now we've added that. So you know what we're gonna do next, right? Go over to photo three, and we're gonna move over to the uh, frame 24. And let's click on that picture, and all of a sudden our properties moves. And now we are go to X, we're gonna actually gonna change that to 360, all right? And then the Y, we're gonna change that to 65, boom. And now it's kind of has a really cool little aesthetic, right? But I still wanna change it a little bit, so I'm gonna pretend like my transform disappeared, right? Where'd it go, where'd it go? It's actually window, transform, and there it is. So now rotating this, I'm gonna rotate this, I'm gonna add a negative, going to a negative two on there, and boom. Now it, um, it switched over right, to a negative two. Pretty cool, I like it. Um, so again, all of these things are ready to go, we're working with them, and we're, let me just to tell you about the, the panels, right? So in this, uh, in this particular tutorial, we're gonna be working with the history panel, the properties panel, transform panel, um, and timeline panel. We're gonna work with all these panels. So hopefully, uh, you, can, you can see how all of this works, all right? And then now we're gonna be starting to use the uh, the tools panel as well, right? Remember that they float free, float freely. We have some that will float freely like the transform one. I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and dock it over here it's in just in case I need it again. So I can just open it up and bring it out, all right? But you can always go back. And again, if you mess everything up where it's all over the place, you can always go to window and then workspaces and go back to essentials, right? And what I'm gonna do right now that you always should be doing is you need to go to file and save, right? Just always save periodically. I've been doing it with command and S, right? You haven't been able to, you haven't been seeing it, but that's what you need to be doing. So you don't wanna lose all your work. Imagine if you had to start all over again from the beginning of this tutorial because we didn't save. Actually it would be to the beginning of this day, right? Because you, you already have it saved. So let's continue, all right? So again, you're gonna be using all of these different tools in these panels. Um, and you're gonna to switch to tools depending on, you know, depending on, you know, what, what we're gonna be doing. So, but you're actually gonna be using a couple of tools today. Um, I want you to, know to look, take a look at these, at these the, the toolbar over here. These are tools. And there's, there's a lot of tools that you have. And if you're familiar with Adobe products, you understand that there's more tools that they actually have on this tool panel. As a matter of fact, if you see a little tiny 
little tiny triangle on the bottom right hand side that means there's some hidden tools and to access those hidden tools pay attention this will be on one of those questions how do you access hidden tools you have to click on that click on a tool that has a little square on it little triangle i'm sorry you click on it and hold it down all right and then a sub menu pops up and you can access them that way that's one way to do it all right that's actually the most popular way to do it so if I click this down, I can go to rectangle tool, oval tool, polystar tool, so on and so forth. If I hold this one down, I have a pen tool, anchor tool, right? So there's all these hidden tools, the lasso tool, polygon tool, magic wand tool. So there's a lot of tools that are hidden. You just have to click and hold down on that and it'll pop up all these little secret um, tools that you can use, right? Some are prearranged, but here's, a, here's something that I want you to show you, right? So once you click on something, right like this magnifying tool at the bottom you'll see there's a plus and minus that's a zoom in and zoom out right if i click the rectangle tool the bottom down here there's a different option object drawing so it gives you different options also not only does the properties panels move but so does this bottom like little extra I guess extra abilities. Think of it like a superhero. There's like the main abilities, but then there's all these extra abilities. And the extra abilities of the tool, they are at the bottom of every time you select it, right? Lasso tool doesn't have anything, um, but definitely the brush does, right? This is pressure, right? Use velocity. So when we're using the tablets, if you want to control how the pressure reacts to it, you can click that and we can kind of mess with the pressure of, 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 how, of that tool, sorry of that particular tool. Let's go back to the selection tool. All right. And let's continue on our, on our journey. So what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to be creating some stuff, right? We're going to be creating some stars. I want to have little stars pop up here and there and I'm going to do, do all that, those kind of things. All right. So we got to make a new layer, right? So I'll work. Let's click on this photos folder, right? And we're going to go ahead and click layer. And it's going to create a new layer up here, whatever number it is. Mine is layer two. And I'm going to double click that. And I'm going to call that layer stars because we're going to make a bunch of stars. All right. So again, we've created that. All right. And let's lock these other layers down here just so that we don't mess with anything else. All the we've moved things around and done a bunch of things. And I just don't want to mess with it. So let's lock those up. Now we can't move them, do anything to them. Right. We can, we can barely even, we can't even select them. So that's good. So now we're in the stars. Now we can just kind of start. Now we can draw our or create our stars, right? Um, so let's go to a, a keyframe 36. Well, there's 35. We'll go to 36. Let me double check my work. Let me zoom in. Let me grab the little scroll bar over here. Yes, I am. 36. Boom. All right. So now I'm back over here. All right. And I'm in... Um, keyframe 36 uh, and again this let's go ahead and drop a keyframe there right and i'm gonna, again i'm going to use let's i'll do it on so you can see it i'll go right click insert keyframe right and there it is so uh, that's where we're actually our stars are going to pop up right our cool stars are going to pop up that's going to be our in our stars layer make sure your stars is is highlighted blue right so then we're going to go to the poly stool po poly star tool right and that's over here and you're not going to find it right off the bat because we're going to have to it's one of those secret tools that are nested inside the rectangle tool right so you ho hold the rectangle tool over here on the left hand side hold it on rectangle tool and then we're going to go to all the way down to where it says polystar tool boom and we're going to unleash it now now we have the polystar tool if you go uh, look at the panel right the panel now if you look at the top it says the tool is a polystar right and right now we have object drawing mode uh, and we have all of these different options right so we're going to make a like a it's going to be a poly star there's a star boom nice right let me undo that all i did was click and drag it and i can resize it by moving the mouse up and down and i can turn it around by just turning my mouse right we can do it afterwards, but it's it's easier at this moment, just for what we're doing, to actually get it into position before you let go of the mouse and it, and place it. So actually, I'm going to click on the fill, and that was a cool yellow. But I'm going to do, should I, I like yellow? So, but I think I'm going to do a different color. You can do whatever color you want. Just pick one. I'm going to actually do 
No, I think I'll leave it yellow, but super bright yellow though, right? And this is the alpha over here of how of how transparent you want it. So actually I want it, I'm just gonna do a 90, all right? You can put this alpha however you want, but just don't go below 85 or so, right? Because then you won't be able to see your stars. And stroke, right? Stroke is the outline. And we don't want any outline for these stars. So I'm gonna, this upper left-hand corner, this red line with this square, that means there's no stroke. That means it's just going to be the fill color of the shape, all right? And we'll go down here where it says style. And right now you should, we might have polygon. We're going to make sure that it's on star, right? Make sure that it says start down here on tool options on the, on the panel on the right hand side, right down here. And then you're going to basically number of sides should be five and the star point size should be 0.5, right? So, that's ready to go, okay? So make sure that we have the empty, we have to select this empty keyframe, make sure that it's blue and then the stars are blue and then we can start adding some stars, right? And then we can go ahead and we can, I'm gonna add a star up here and I'm gonna add another little star here. I'm gonna add a little kind of bigger star and I'm gonna turn it a little bit, right? And I'm gonna cl click and drag, click and drag and I'm gonna click, drag and turn that there. I'll, I'll do a big mother star right here. Boom. Then probably a little, little one. I don't want to touch. I messed that one up. So I'll do Z. I'll do one there. No, I, I want one pointing it up. Yeah, that's good. All right. And then a little tiny one right here like that. All right. And then I'll do one more, one more over here. Boom, click and drag, that's all you're doing, right? So there, we have our our stars, right? I have it a little bit transparent, 90%, so you can kind of see through the background, but that's the way I want it. Again, that's an artistic decision. You don't need to have it. And so now what we need to do, we can do, is we can actually go back, all the way back, and we can actually hit play and see what happens. Hopefully we did it right. Boom, yeah, all right. They all line up. It's really cool. If I wanted them to keep going over and over again, um, we can loop it, but I'll, I'll show you that in, in a later tutorial. Loop is really cool. 